Hi, I'm Nicole Scott from BeNetTV.com. I'm down here at the Human Rights Forum at Globefest 2007. I'm joined by Stephen Lewis, who is the former UN representative for HIV and AIDS in Africa. How are you today? Just fine, thank you. Now, you just gave a fantastic talk on race and discrimination um, here in Calgary and in general. Now, I have a couple questions for you. You spoke on Toronto and race relations and how the same problems from the 92 race riots are still around today. Now Calgary is a booming city and we're encountering some of the same problems. Now what advice do you have for Calgary as it's growing up to avoid the same problems that Toronto has? <clears throat> you can't let the problems fester. You can't let them go on forever without responding. The fact that Calgary has joined the coalition of municipalities against racism and discrimination is extremely important because it has a whole litany of things Calgary can do. They can keep track of what's happening. They can employ the police to prevent things from happening that are against the law. They can document and bring it to the attention of the community. They can get community groups involved in deciding how to handle examples of racism. You just, you just don't let it get out of control. You don't close your eyes to it. You recognize that these aspects of discrimination and racism are rooted often in poverty and in homelessness and in exclusion, and so you deal with the root causes as well. Calgary is exploding in numbers, and it will have large numbers of new immigrant populations, and they will reflect a kaleidoscope of backgrounds, mm -hmm. and Calgary just has to take it seriously. Absolutely. Now, uh, regarding the Stephen Lewis Foundation, you do a lot of amazing work. Now, when I, when I graduated from university, I found it incredibly challenging to find a volunteer position, any volunteer position, because it seems that any international volunteer position is now a political stepping stone. It doesn't really matter how much you care about helping. It's, it's, it's more of a political process getting into any kind of NGO that's not local. Now, what advice do you have for people that are trying to help on... On, in, a, in a position with greater meaning, but just don't meet the cut because of politics. I, I sort of hadn't thought of it that way. It's kind of interesting. I, I think that the big NGOs with uh, a great deal of background and engagement, CARE, Save the Children, World Vision, Doctors Without Borders, Oxfam, that whole range of NGOs, they, they tend to bring on volunteers whenever they can, both in Canada and abroad, mm -hmm. if you're willing to go abroad. Mm -hmm. <coughs> My little foundation gives out money. We, we, we use volunteers in Toronto all the time, mm -hmm. but it's not of the kind you're talking about. You're talking about really getting to the countries where you can make a contribution or doing something quite sig mm -hmm. significant in the life of an NGO. Mm -hmm. I think you just have to take the time to find the, the right non-governmental organization, to go outside of Calgary if you have to, to make mm -hmm. the contacts, uh, to go to New York if you want to work with UNICEF, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, really make an effort and say you're a volunteer because you won't be a volunteer for very long mm -hmm. if they take you on. You'll soon find yourself being offered a job. Fantastic. Now, I, I really do understand what you're saying about like, going to New York and, and trying things out like that. I, I actually did try something like that, but it's really hard to fund yourself Yes. As a volunteer in those positions, especially being a Canadian going into the States, do you have any suggestions, like, say, in, in Toronto for, for ways that you can start to get involved internationally? Well, I don't know how to get involved internationally other than through the big NGOs, but there are possibilities of writing to CETA mm -hmm. and asking the Canadian International Development Agency, are there grants, are there scholarships, are there bursaries? There mm -hmm. are some. I'm not familiar with all of them, but you might be eligible for them. There are some scholarships that are given out in the name of Romeo Dallaire mm -hmm. on peacemaking activities, which you might well qualify for, for all I know. You might want it and qualify for it. There are uh, outfits like the Canadian Nurses Association, the Canadian Teachers uh, Federation. You don't have to be a nurse or a teacher. They provide vehicles through which you can get work abroad. Uh, the Ontario Hospital Association takes volunteers and takes them to a a little community called La Ribe in Lesotho where they've set up a treatment center for people living with AIDS. Uh, all over Canada there are these interesting places. If you just go on the internet, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what you should do. Here, here's what you should do. <laughs> a person who really wants to get involved should go to the Canadian Council for International Cooperation, CCIC. It's the umbrella body for about 40 development NGOs. The head of it is Jerry Barr. Tell him I sent you. And, and say, 
what, whose door should I be knocking on? Where can I get a job? Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for answering that. I've seen you speak a few times in Toronto, and my classmates and I always walked away going, I wonder how we do that. Oh, and it's, it's, it's... Don't forget that, that soon uh, interviewing for a dot-com or for a television station is going to become your professional discipline. And 10 years from now, people will be in awe. I, speaking is my vocation. Don't attribute a lot to it. I've been doing it. I'm, I'm 69. I've been speaking publicly now for around 50 years. You know, after a while, you learn how to do it. Now, I do have one question that I did have yeah. from the last time I heard you speak at Ryerson. Uh, you, you spoke about um, that you advocated a separate women's agency as an entire new, new agency that's complementary to that of the UN. Now, how is this agency going to improve the status of women when we're still living in a world that is dominated by men? Well, that's precisely why you need a new international agency. And by the way, the agency was recommended by the panel that was looking at it. Uh, the UN debated the agency just about a month ago in the General Assembly. I wouldn't be surprised if it's created by the end of this year. It will have a woman who's an Undersecretary General. I'm hoping it'll have up to a billion dollars a year to spend. It will have some real programming capacity. Uh, we keep pushing it. The point is that if the women of the world take control of the agency, and it has a lot of money, then they can do the kind of job at country level which needs to be done to overcome the behavior of men. One of the most difficult things is to change male behavior. You're a young woman, you know that. And, and, uh, and therefore, you have to have a women's agency which fights the good fight. doesn't matter whether it's AIDS or maternal mortality or fistula or female genital mutilation. There are all of these issues which require brave and strong women and an agency to back them. Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time Not to speak with me. My pleasure. I've been joined by Stephen Lewis, the former UN representative for the UN in AIDS in Africa, and I am Nicole Scott from vnettv.com.